Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's January 18th, 2013. To my right is Cody Bills and I'm Brock Shimbino. The markets were mixed in Chicago. Let's turn with a fire tip to see how they ended. Corn was up two and three quarters, beans off one and a half cents today. Wheat in Chicago up nine and a half and Kansas City was up six and three quarters as well. Pretty nice positive day for wheat, but doesn't really seem like a whole lot was driving the markets today, Cody. So let's turn our attention from the northern hemisphere and down to the southern hemisphere. Weather is really starting to be a concern, especially in Argentina. Yeah, absolutely. And, and luckily right now, uh, we have uh, Jeff Doran, who, who's a senior business meteorologist at Planalytics. Planalytics is a business weather intelligence company. They work with uh, companies all across the spectrum, insurance, retail, you name it. The thing is that they that they bring to the table here is a great perspective in agriculture. They work with crop insurance agents, retailers, crop consultants, so and as well as producers. So the nice thing is here is we got a really good agricultural perspective here from Jeff Doran. Uh, he's got a whole lot of experience. He was a U.S. Um, he was a U.S. Air Force officer and has been with Planalytics for 14 years. So Jeff, you know, thanks a lot for joining us. I guess I'll get right into it. You know, one of the big questions that's been focusing. Uh, uh, that the market's been focusing on is Argentina. We know that they uh, that they have a drying trend right now. Uh, do you think that drying trend will continue, or do you think it will improve? Yeah, Cody. And by the way, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We have seen a drying trend over that region, but I will tell you that uh, we've had a pretty strong wet start to the growing season across most of Argentina. Uh, as a matter of fact, some areas have reported upwards of uh, 150 to 200 percent of normal precipitation uh, so far for the growing season. So, you know, there is some conventional thinking that while we'd be concerned about a drying trend, actually, given the fairly wet spring, it, it hasn't been too concerning at this point. Now, that said, uh, we, are, we watch sea surface temperatures and how they influence the weather pattern. And right now, we're seeing what we call a high pressure ridge sitting off the uh, western coast of Argentina. And in essence, what this, what this is doing right now is it's deflecting the primary jet stream away from the Argentina region further to the south. So it is deflecting some storms, and that is the reason behind a lot of the drying trend that we've seen. Now, we do expect as we head uh, uh, into the next week to 10 days, that we'll start to see some storminess come into parts of uh, northwestern Argentina, uh, up over the Andes, and then we typically get redevelopment of moisture uh, on the lee side of the Andes. So we, we don't feel great alarm at this point with that, with that drier trend, uh, simply because number one, we do believe we will get more moisture, and number two, we've had a pretty wet start to the growing season. So uh, we're not sounding the alarm bells as of yet. Let's just kind of switch over to Brazil here. You know, in February, we'll start to see some early uh, soybeans being harvested in Brazil. And by March, we should be around the peak of harvest. What's your outlook for those months in Brazil? Is there any chance for harvest delays? I think it'll be important for the U.S., especially considering the pace of exports that we've had lately. Uh, similar to Argentina, I will tell you that parts of southern Brazil have had adequate wetness. Uh, there is one area in the states of uh, Minas Gerais and, and ba uh, Bahia that have seen below normal precipitation. So we have had some, uh, some issues with, uh, with growth in some of those drier areas. What I will tell you is that heading forward in February and March, we actually see adequate moisture uh, in these areas. So that is certainly good for, uh, uh, for continued uh, late season growth. Specific to harvest, uh, I will tell you that while we see adequate wetness, we're not really envisioning any big issues in terms of harvest. Uh, certainly, you know, after a wet start, we've seen a drier trend uh, in terms of getting the crop out of the field. Um, I, I don't, at this point, we don't see any strong hindrances. We would have to see a significant change in the sea surface temperature pattern off the coast of Brazil for us to uh, to be concerned about a, a potentially much wetter pattern uh, that would hinder some of that harvest. So uh, at this point, yeah. we, we believe all systems go. That definitely doesn't seem to be terribly bullish when we consider about this the size of the South American crop uh, that will be coming out of the field. doesn't look, uh, at least from what uh, Jeff's saying, it doesn't look like there will be any significant delays. Um, so let's just switch over to the domestic situation. You know, we've had the worst drought in 50 years uh, from where we stand now. Uh, what's your weather outlook for, in general for the, the growing season going forward? Well, not to be too glib, Cody, but it really depends on where you are, uh, and that typically is the case with weather. 
Um, you know, obviously, you've already made reference to the fact that this drought uh, has obviously been the worst in some time. Uh, you've said 50 years. We would actually go back to the 1930s uh, in, in some areas uh, as, as a pretty good um, analog to what we're seeing now in terms of the excessive drought, particularly in the, in the western Corn Belt. Um, it, it is as bad as it can get, certainly that we've seen in our lifetime. Um, but going forward, and I guess just specifically to the winter, we, we've had some areas that have had some moisture uh, that's been beneficial, particularly in parts of Texas and Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, if you're familiar with uh, the Kansas geography east of I-35, we've seen some adequate wetness and snow cover as well, but we could certainly use more. Um, as we kind of look out into the season, looking at the, the, the patterns um, that, that we see for the upcoming spring, we believe it's going to be a case of the haves versus the have-nots. Uh, if you are east of the Mississippi, uh, particularly through much of the eastern Corn Belt, all the way down into the Delta, uh, we have seen adequate moisture, uh, adequate to above normal moisture over the last several weeks. Uh, and we believe that is going to be the trend going forward. So for those areas that we know last year uh, were hard hit in the eastern Corn Belt, Indiana, Illinois, uh, down into Missouri, um, uh, in Tennessee, we do believe that the drought is going to start to alleviate itself. Now, trust me, we have a lot of deficits to make up, but the pattern is certainly suggesting to us that we're going to see at least normal and potentially above normal moisture to start alleviating some of that drought. Okay, that's the good news. Let's turn to the other side, though. If you're a, a grower, a farmer, a producer west of the Mississippi, then we have a different story. And that story, unfortunately, is continued drier pattern and uh, continued droughty conditions, at least looking through the spring uh, at, at this point. Uh, we are now currently in what we call a warm neutral ENSO pattern. Uh, either neither La Nina or El Nino, but that pattern promotes uh, a more active southern jet stream that generally deflects storms to the south and east of the western Corn Belt. We've seen actually a lot of that so far uh, this winter, and unfortunately, we expect that pattern to continue uh, right through the springtime. So uh, again, that is going to be a continuing concern, um, and, and, and obviously the potential to exacerbate the situation going on there right now. So in terms of planting, no problems getting, getting into the ground. But again, this year is going to continue to be one of trying to get enough moisture and managing your water resources. Uh, yeah. Because that, that, that's going to be a, a continued issue uh, in the spring. Okay. And, and, and of course, this is obviously very important. You know, you talk about this kind of this regional variation between the weather. Uh, it's going to be very important when you uh, make seed choices if you haven't already. So, um, you know, uh, I, I guess, Jeff, I, I think that pretty much wraps up the questions I have. But maybe just before you go, is there any hope for moisture in the winter wheat areas of the U.S.? That seems to be on the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, do you see any any alleviation in that pattern? Well, again, if you're if you're in Oklahoma or Texas, um, we we still think there could be adequate moisture through the spring. Again, an active southern storm track uh, with the current pattern that we're in, we, we believe we could see at least adequate moisture for those those southern reaches of the wheat belts. But once we progress much further north, uh, we're going to continue to see challenges um, and. Um, we think that ultimately could impact yields going forward. Now, again, it's a trend we'll continue to follow, uh, but that's kind of the way that things are looking right now. All right, Jeff. Well, that pretty much wraps up the questions I have today. Thanks a lot for uh, for joining us and, and answering these kind of these tough questions. Uh, and these are questions that matter to all of us, whether you're uh, dealing with the markets or you're dealing with the business side, uh, the mechanical side of, of farming. So uh, once again, thanks a lot for joining us, Jeff. Um, Brock, what what are the, some of the things? I mean, now knowing what Jeff has to say about the weather domestically and in South America, you know, what was the biggest concern for you? 
One of the biggest concerns that I came away uh, from Jeff's interview there was uh, the northwest part of the growing areas, uh, you know, north of Oklahoma and uh, into Kansas, uh, Nebraska, South Dakota. Those areas have been drought stricken over the last year or so. And it looks like from what Jeff was saying, it's going to continue. You know, that really brings up some implications about the winter wheat that's already harvested. We're going to see some yield reductions there. But it really brings up questions about what's going to happen this spring. What's going to happen with corn and soybean planting as we move forward? Yeah, and, and you can, you can make decisions off of this. And the nice thing about the what Planalytics does is they, they provide this kind of insight. It, weather only repeats itself about 20% of the time. So we cannot be going off of what happened last year to make this year's decisions. And I think what's interesting about what Jeff said is that this could really impact the way you think about your crop insurance, the way you think about your seed selection, you know, how much fertilizer you put down or even if you put down fertilizer. This is, you know, just, just the, the variety of grain that you choose to put in the ground. This is a very, uh, very important, and I think particularly for those guys west of the Mississippi, uh, that, that's huge. Now for me, I thought what was kind of interesting and surprising is that uh, Texas and Oklahoma has a good chance of actually getting adequate moisture uh, during the growing season or during the, uh, the earlier part of the spring. So what that tells me is that maybe this wheat crop, even though the good to excellent ratings are so far down, um, maybe this, uh, this wheat crop actually has um, better potential than people are giving it credit for. So, um, you know, I think, I think, you know, looking at history, we do know that the good to excellent rating going into the growing season isn't as important as the moisture that we get during the growing season and the growing conditions. So, uh, guys, keep a, a close watch on that. Thanks a lot again uh, to Planalytics for, for joining us today, and thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about what you saw today, give us a call, 877-472-4607. You can take a demo of the Firetip trading platform at grainhedge.com. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on Monday.